gobos, surface imperfections, area light maps. Mastering these image textures is an important way to make your renders better. But how and why do we use them? Hey, how's it going? Todd here with Grayscale Gorilla. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to use gobos, surface imperfections, and area light maps to make your render just, you know, that much better. And as a Blender person myself, I will be using Blender in this video. So, you know, I hope that's okay. And with that, let's hop right in. What is a gobo? In, in the real world, it's like on a film set or in a, in, you know, like a theater light, you have a little slot that you can stick a thing in and it changes the beam itself to look like something else. You can actually do that really easily in 3D. Really all you need is a black and white image that has some sort of pattern to it and you can use that as a gobo. I'm gonna shift right click to move my 3D cursor onto this back wall. I'm gonna hit shift A. I'm gonna add a spotlight. When I'm working with spotlights, especially with gobos, I like to turn them up really high just so I can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna turn this up to like 100,000 watts. And with my spotlight selected, I'm gonna click this button up here that says use nodes. So I'm going to go into studio here. Let's go to textures. And I like the ones that have like a little bit of trees in it. Um, so I'm going to hit this download button. And once it's downloaded, you can copy the path and just paste it into the image texture node. But I'm just going to click and drag it in. And once we have our gobo image in, I'm just going to drag it right into the color slot. Let me show you some tricks that help me customize the way this looks. Looking at this, you might think, oh, that, that looks kind of small. Well, that's really easy to fix. We can just change the spot size. Keep turning that up till you get something that looks, you know, a little more natural. And another thing you might think is that the shadows created by the gobo are a little too sharp. If you wanted that to be softer, you just turn up the radius a little bit and see how those beams kind of start to soften up. Because once you have this set up, you can just really quickly cycle through different gobo looks. So like, let's say we wanted to try a flashlight one. Let's do one of these flashlights. Let's do this guy. Drag it in. And then all you'd have to do is I'm gonna hold control, right click and drag, that'll cut that one, and then plug this one in instead. Now we have like a cool flashlight look. And another cool trick with gobos is you can use them for cool looking kind of volumetric beams for your lights. So I'm gonna hit shift A, we'll add a cube in, and I'll just make it real big. With it selected, I'm gonna come up here, make a new material. We're gonna delete the principal BSDF. Shift A, grab a volume scatter. Drag that into volume, and we're gonna turn it way, way down, like 0 0.005. And so now we have these beams with, you know, the distinct pattern of the gobo. So when it comes to product photography, one thing you'll notice if you zoom in, there's generally a lot of little pieces of dust and smudges and little hairs. That's, you know, a advantage of doing your product visualization in 3D. But also, if you're trying to make something look realistic, sometimes it makes a little bit of sense to go ahead and add in, you know, a little bit of that. Obviously, I'm not saying to make your product look super dirty. But like if you think about any sort of product that you would actually shoot in the real world, even if you took a, a microfiber cloth and you wiped it down for like forever, you're still going to have like a couple little specks and that will show up on camera. So if you're going for something that you want to seem fully realistic, you might add a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of this stuff back in. I'm going to select our vase here and I'm just going to remove that texture and I'm going to make a new one. I'll just delete this principal BSDF and I will hit shift A and I will find a glass BSDF. I'm gonna take this glass BSDF, I'm gonna plug it into the surface. So here is our glass with uh, nothing, crispy clean. So something we have in plus that I really, really love is the surface imperfections uh, subtle. I don't even know if you can see this, but it is very, very subtle. Um, and that's exactly what I'm looking for here. So I'm gonna drag that in and we're gonna plug that into our roughness slot. Now, generally with a surface imperfection, you're using the roughness slot. Uh, if if it's a scratchy thing, that's when you start kind of getting more into like putting it into like your bump map or your normal map or you know using displacement, things like that. But for a glass smudge, the best approach is usually the roughness slot. If I hit control and shift, it's gonna isolate what this node is doing and we can barely even see it. I wanna have control over how much smudge we see and I wanna be able to turn it up, I wanna be able to turn it down. 
The best way to do that is going to be with a color ramp node. So I'm going to hit shift A. I'm going to type color ramp. I'm going to drop that right between our glass BSDF and our image texture there. And I'm going to grab this white part and I'm just going to bring it down. Um, if we hit control shift and look only at this color ramp, you're going to see that we're turning up the amount of that smudginess. Uh, and you can even go in and pull the, the black part up and that's going to kind of crunch it down a little bit. And so now we can already see we've got, this is pretty smudgy. And so we can just kind of dial this back a little bit. And I'm going for like, you can barely see it. Okay, and there we go. Uh, really subtle smudginess. Uh, actually not quite as subtle as you might even want to go. If this was like a product render, your client's not really going to want it to look like this smudgy. If you compare it to the other image, it just looks more like something that exists in the real world because every something in the real world is gonna have a slight little bit of smudginess to it. If you have this dialed in, uh, basically the way that it looks, but you just want it a little more punchy, um, you could just go Shift A, drop in a math node, drop that in between your color ramp and your glass BSDF, and we're gonna change this to multiply, and you could just turn this up, and it's just gonna, you know, it's gonna go smudge madness with it. This this sucker's been smudged all to hell. So I wanna prove a point here. Most of the time I light things with area lights. So let's make an area light and let's point it at a perfectly reflective plane. This is a perfect edge to edge square of white light. And most lights, if not all of them, don't look anything like this in the real world. And for me, that's where the importance of an area light map comes in. If you have a really dark, shiny, or just any sort of really hyper-reflective object, when you light it, you're lighting with a reflection. It's basically like a mirror. You want more interesting reflections. You don't want it to look like a, a white rectangle, because that's not how things work in the real world. For example, here is the main light that I'm being lit with right now. You can see it's a lot brighter around the edges and there's a diffuser in the middle, so that kind of creates a different look. So we have a black empty space, I'm gonna hit Shift A, and we're going to make a area light. Yay! A lot of times with a car shot, you put a really big top light. A lot of times what you'd have is like a, a big giant ultra bounce, like a 20 by 10 usually. So let's just do that. I'll do a 20 by 10. Yeah, that looks cool. But let me show you how to make it just a little bit more interesting. I'm going to push this back because again, this light is kind of meant to capture the curvature of the entire top of the car. So I'm going to go with our light selected. And again, I'm going to select use nodes. And let's go take a look at these area light maps. So um, we have a few different packs of them. We have this new abstract pack. Let's just do this soft edge soft box, okay? Because an ultra bounce, that's kind of how it would look. You'd have sort of hot spots in the middle, but as it goes out to the edges, you're gonna, the light's gonna taper off a little bit and you get this subtle little texture in there. Um, so I'm gonna say copy, or again, we can just drag straight in. I'm gonna hit shift A, we're gonna go to image texture, and I'm gonna hit open and I'm gonna paste in that path that I copied. And generally speaking, we're going to use the EXR and then I'm gonna plug that into the color slot. I'm gonna AB that. It's a subtle change, but look, this is with the area light map and that's without. It's subtle. Boom, boom. Let's do another one. Let's hit shift A, we'll do another area light. And, and here's a little trick I like to do for product photography. Basically, I, I will isolate the area that I want to add light to. So in this case, I feel like obviously this side of the car is very dark. So I'm just going to shift right click and that's going to move my 3D cursor. And I'm going to change my pivot point to the 3D cursor. And so now when I rotate, it's rotating around that 3D cursor. So I can really quickly find the reflection point in relation to the camera. So I'm gonna hit zero where I have my camera set up. I'm gonna turn my light up to like, you know, 900,000. Okay, that's a little hot. Let's go to 20,000. <laughs> um, and so now what we're doing, all we're doing is we're trying to see where we're getting the best reflection. So like right in there is nice. So I'm gonna change my shape to a rectangle and I'm just gonna make it a lot bigger on the X axis. So boom, it looks nice. Let's let's make it a little bit better. I'm gonna hit use nodes. I'm gonna grab one of these abstract ones because these are kind of perfect for the, the reflections that are really featured 
Um, cause you, you don't necessarily like on a black car, you, you might not want to have like, you know, a very obvious texture. Um, you want something kind of more subtle or a little more abstract. So I like these abstract ones for, for cars and products a lot. Um, so I'm going to download this one. I'm going to drag it in and I'm going to plug it right into that slot. Now that one made a big difference. Let's, let's look at that. Here's without and here's with. And then if you play with it some more, like change the size. Look at how that's really adding some really interesting reflection to this car. I just went ahead and like lit this whole car and um, I want to show you. So this is with just stock square rectangles, right? So I'm just going to go into each of these. We're going to reconnect all of our area light maps. And so here is the scene lit with area light maps. And here's what that same scene looks like if we just use the stock, you know, just white rectangles. It makes a pretty big difference. Okay, so let's put all of this into practice in one render. So I was looking around on Pinterest and I found this product render kind of moody. I like it. So I decided to recreate it a little bit. And so here's the final render. So this scene is made up of, let's see, perf Perfume Bottle 5 from Grayscale Gorilla Studio. And it's sitting on a rock that is actually a tiny little lava rock that I photo scanned a while back. So first off on the background, I'm just using some gobo lights like I've showed you before. We've got Abstract 7 from the Abstract Gobos pack and I'm kind of stretching it to almost get a little bit of a ripply water effect. And on top of that, I'm using another one, which this is from the Caustics pack. It's almost giving a little bit of a fake bokeh effect that I like. And I'm just using all kinds of uh, area light maps for all of the lights. So I wanted this light on the side to be one of these abstract lights. Um, it's perfect for that purpose. Just kind of lighting up the side a little bit. This one's a single quasar, which is a tube light. I'm using that for the lid. And on the glass itself, we have on the side, you can really see it, some of those subtle fingerprint surface imperfections. One thing to note is I've only added it on the side. Uh, I didn't want it on this front face. And again, if this was a client project, I'd probably turn it down a little bit. But yeah, there you go. This is an example of a render that kind of puts all of that stuff into practice. So hopefully you got something out of this. If, if you're kind of new to nodes and, and textures and things like that, once you really get comfortable with it, you can start doing some pretty cool stuff with different nodes like add shaders or mix shaders and using textures to drive certain aspects of each shader. Uh, it's just a useful thing to start playing around with. And on that note, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.